We are live streaming now, and I have just 6.30 now. Okay. Okay, I'd like to call a regular meeting of our prior town council for October 12th, 2021 to order at 6.30 p.m. We have a roll call, please. Councillor McGee? Here. Councillor Toner? Here. Councillor Burnett? Here. Councillor Grinstead? Here. Councillor Strike? Here. County Councillor Lynch? Here. And Mayor Stack? Here. I uh, apologize, but something just started humming really loud and ceiling in my office here. So if it interferes, just let me know. I'd like to begin by acknowledging that the land on which we work and gather is a traditional unceded territory of the Nishawa Bay people. This Algonquin nation has lived on this land for thousands of years, long before the arrival of European settlers, and we are grateful to have the opportunity to be present in this territory. Can we adopt the agenda, please? <clears throat> It resolved that the agenda for the regular meeting of council dated Tuesday, October 12th, 2021 be adopted. Move and seconder, please. Lisa and Lynn, any comments? All in favor? Carried, thank you. Do you have a disclosure of pecuniary interest from anyone? Seeing none. Okay, any questions on previous business? I do not have any hands raised, Mr. Mayor. Okay, I just want to take a minute to thank Chris for handling the last minute uh, meeting for me. Did a good job. I watched it on YouTube, Chris. And I'd actually prepared a little bit of a map for you, but you know, you, know, you did fine without it. Thanks. Okay, so have the minutes, Kayla, please. That the minutes of the regular and special meetings of council listed under item 7A and B on the agenda be adopted. Mover and seconder. Lynn and Tom. Any comments? All in favor then? Carrie, thanks. So our awards and delegations. First is the youth award. I'm just gonna pull Jack and uh, Cooper, Jack and Laura Cooper in. So just give me one second. Set. Well, there they are. Oh. Hi, guys. Hello. Hi. It's my pleasure earlier today to present the Youth of the Year Award to Jack and Laura Cooper. Jack and Laura set out to create and distribute 3D printed ear savers for frontline workers who have to wear masks for extended periods of time. Jack and Laura worked alongside their father to make and distribute ear savers. These ear savers are rigid strap that mask loops can be hooked onto instead of onto your ears, saving the wearer from experiencing pain and discomfort. Jack is responsible for making the product. He's got one up there for you to look at. And Laura for counting and packaging the orders. These ear savers have been created and donated to schools, a town, a town schools, town and library staff. They've also donated to these frontline hospital workers free of charge, including hospitals in the Toronto area. Jack and Laura, your endeavor has portrayed accountability, dependability, and respect working together. You have chosen to, vote, to devote a lot of your time to selfless help, selflessly helping others in our community and beyond. And for that, we congratulate you on being chosen the Youth of the Year for 2021. Congratulations. Well done, guys. Thank you. <laughs> Everybody's clapping there. You just can't hear them. Did you want to say something, guys? No? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. How does this make you feel? Happy. You're happy for this, yeah? You're happy. Are you getting some coaching in the background there? No, no. <laughs> no. I mean, oh I mean no. No. Oh <laughs> okay, congratulations again, guys. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, Council. We appreciate it. Okay, Thank you. thanks. <laughs> job Jack and Laura. Thank you. And next we have the volunteer of the year award. Okay I'm just going to pleasure play. again this afternoon to present this award in chambers to Pat Tate. The board of directors and the volunteers of the Empire District Food Bank nominated their very deserving leader for the town's volunteer of the year award. 
Pat Tate has been a volunteer at the Empire and District Food Bank since 2013 and the general manager for the past three years. She has held many different positions from helping a client administrator to volunteer team lead to general manager. Under Pat's leadership, the food bank has increased frequencies of openings to clients to approximately 40 times per year, coordinated the Ranford County Health Unit, improved public relations, an established food bank office, and introduced safety procedures for the volunteers. Prior to COVID, she had expanded the number of volunteers. She has risen to the challenge of coordinating many dedicated seniors who are also snowbirds and cottagers. As a result of the COVID, the number of food bank volunteers has been reduced by half. Pat organized a planning event and quickly transformed the food bank into an outdoor market. Pat worked tirelessly with volunteers, always positive and pre preserving. Her work ethic is inspirational and the volunteers are slowly returning. Safety has become paramount and Pat has ensured physical distance is maintained and staff have PPE. She ensures clients who could not leave their homes received a food bank delivery. Pat strongly believes in helping those in need. Her commitment to the clients and volunteers and the goals of the food bank go above and beyond. Congratulations, Pat, it's a well-deserved award. Thank you. Thank yeah, you very no much. <laughs> It's quite an honor. Thank you. Um, can, it'll be less than two minutes. Can you hear me? Yeah, just you're breaking okay. up a little bit. So. Yeah, I, I gather the internet's not working very well here. Um, I, I, I would like to say just a couple of things if I could. Um, Absolutely. Okay. Being at the food bank is tough but rewarding work. We put, we feed people, and we work hard to feed those people in our community that need a leg up. I am really relieved to say that we um, didn't close during the last 18 months. Because I am fortunate to work with so many dedicated volunteers willing to work so hard, even during the difficult times, the elder disenfranchised, the disabled and the poor families continued to have this big up. I am really honored to receive the award, but I am sharing it with all the volunteers that we have at the food bank. We were able not to stay not only to stay open, but to revamp the distribution method to fit within the ever-changing COVID rules and expand our service to include delivery to those that needed it. A food bank is a necessity in life, more so now, and so many people have difficulty making ends meet. We have found that many people are not only battling to put food on the table, but they are now also trying to stay as mentally healthy as possible. The food banks needed more than ever. I am, I wanted to say this specifically, I am so fortunate to work with the many dedicated people in the community the food bank never had to close because we always had food available to give out. I am continually amazed at the support the food bank receives from our local churches, the businesses, the schools, the organization, and the private citizens. We can't do our job without the support of the community. And the community has shown us time and time again that they're willing to step up to the plate. We are very lucky. Thanks for recognizing our efforts. I really appreciate this. That's it. Thank you. Our pleasure. Well deserved, Pat. <laughs> well, thank you. Okay. I'm a little bit um, embarrassed. <laughs> Yeah. This shouldn't is be. You and your team work hard. Yeah. Uh, humble pie. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Thanks so much. It's a great honor. Did, Thank did you. any of you, I'm sure you, I'm sure you guys have all seen it before because you do this on an annual basis, but do you want to see mine? Have you seen mine? No? Yes? Oh, the award. Yeah. 
<laughs> it's hard. To, it's lovely. It's just beautiful. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Pat. <clears throat> okay, so we'll continue now with uh, the Fire uh, Long-Term Service Awards. So it was my pleasure to include the presentation of the Ontario Fire Service Long Service Medals and subsequent service bars to members of the Emperor Fire uh, Department on tonight's agenda. The CAO, uh, CAO and I were privileged to be in attendance along with the members of the Empire Fire Department on September 29th, where we formally honored six members of the department for their long service, protecting their community as members of the Empire Fire Department. The long service medal and subsequent service bars are available to those who have achieved a minimum of 25 years in suppression, training, public education, inspections, and fire communications. First awarded in 1971, the service long service the Services Long Service Medal is an expression of public appreciation for the dedication and hard work of Ontario firefighters. It is officially recognized by the province and is included in the Fire Protection and Prevention Act 1997. Both full-time and volunteer firefighters can qualify for the medal. Approved by the Co College of Heralds, it is worn on the left, suspended from the, a red, white, and green ribbon. And the circular medal bears on the observes the Maltese cross and the coat of arms of Ontario superimposed and the inscription fire services of Ontario. The inscription for long service and fire protection and prevention act appears on the reverse. Alongside the medal recipients are also presented with a citation signed by the fire marshal of Ontario. The first recipient, now retired, firefighter Blaine Carr. Blaine joined the Empire Fire Department on November 5th, 1974, under the direction of Fire Chief Len Mills. After 46 years of consecutive service to the Empire Fire Department, Blaine retired on November 5th, 2020. Tonight, Blaine received his service bars for 45 years to add <coughs> to, add to the long service medal he received in 1999. Congratulations, Blaine. The second recipient is Captain Barry Burnett. Barry joined the Empire Fire Department in May of 1990 under the direction of Fire Chief Tom Burnett. Barry received his service bear for 30 years to add to the long service medal he received in 2015. Congratulations, Barry. The third recipient is Fire Chief Rick Desarmi. Chief Desarmi joined the Empire Fire Department on October 4th, 1994. During his tenure with the department, he has served in the roles of firefighter, captain, fire prevention officer, deputy fire chief, and just recently assumed the position as fire chief of the Empire Fire Department. Congratulations to Chief Desarmi. The fourth recipient is Jim Herbert. Jim is currently an acting captain role Jim joined the Empire Fire Department on October 4th, 1994 as well. Jim received his long service medal for 25 years of service. Along with his service in Empire, Jim has also been a member of McNabb Brayside Fire Department where he currently serves as a district chief. Congratulations, Jim. The fifth recipient was firefighter Robert Phillips. Rob joined the Empire Fire Department in December, 1998. Rob has received his long service medal for 25 years of service. Along with his service in Empire, Rob also serves with the McNabb Brayside Fire Department from 1996 until 2003. Congratulations, Rob. Fifth recipient is firefighter Steve Stiles. Steve joined the Empire Fire Department in April of 2010. Tonight, Steve is receiving his long service medal for 25 years of service, along with his service in the Air Empire, in Air Empire, Steve has also served with McNabb Brayside Fire Department from 1994 until 2010. Steve also serves in a full-time capacity as a firefighter at CFB Petawawa. And congratulations to Steve. And I think we have a short video now of the presentation. Kayla can bring that up for us. Everyone see that? 
Thanks, Kayla. No problem. Well, congratulations to all of those guys and thank them very much for their service to the town and the community. So next, uh, no public meetings or no matters tabled. We're into staff reports. And the first one will be Marshall's Bay. The council passed a resolution in support of the extension to the draft plan of subdivision approval for the Marshall's Bay Meadows subdivision and forward to the County of Renfrew for consideration of approval. And the council receives an application for amendment to zoning bylaw number 6875-18 for the lands known as phases three and four Marshall's Bay Meadows subdivision, the zone designation to permit land uses associated with the draft plan of subdivision as detailed in the report. And that pursuant to section 3412 of the Planning Act, council hold a public meeting on Monday, November 8th, 2021 regarding the proposed amendment to allow for public review and comment. Movement seconder, please. Dan, Lynn. Uh, Robin? Yeah, I'll take this one. Thank you, sir. Um, so I'm asking council for a couple of things in relation to the Marshall's Bay subdivision. Uh, this first one is um, as per uh, usual, when a draft plan of subdivision reaches its um, end of, um, end of uh, term, as far as the draft approval uh, provided by the county, they may must have registered their plan of subdivision and satisfied all the conditions. But frequently the three years that a developer has to do that isn't quite long enough. And in this case, the developer received draft approval in December of 2018 and has been working towards registration. Unlike some of the other subdivisions we've seen, this plan of subdivision received draft approval for the entirety of the five phases that they're planning to build, but they're registering each phase of the subdivision in a separate agreement as they go along. So we know that they've um, registered phases one and two of Marshall's Bay Meadows. They are working on phase three right now um, and, and will continue on with phases four and five um, over the next couple of years. So while their draft uh, conditions lapse on December uh, 11th, 2021, we know they won't possibly have um, all the phases registered by then. They've requested the county to uh, extend their draft conditions for an additional year, um, which is the county standard um, uh, uh, extension uh, timeframe. Uh, in order to do that, they do require a resolution from our council in support of that extension. So I have uh, placed on the agenda later on a resolution uh, to be forwarded to the county to do just that, give our support. Secondly, the report deals with another phase, uh, phases two and th sorry, three and four of the plan of subdivision. And one of the draft conditions requires that all the lands be zoned appropriately uh, before the subdivision agreement is registered. And as they work on phases three and four, they do require a reason of the lands that are currently designated just future development in our zoning bylaw to reflect the uh, uses proposed in phases three and four. Uh, as outlined in the report, um, there are certain uh, zones that will be that are being requested uh, within the subdivision. Because this is a, a, what we call a low to medium density designated area in our official plan, the zoning that we use to recognize residential uses is the R3 or residential three or the R4, depending on the density that they're proposing. So in this, um, in this rezoning uh, for phase three and four, they have both R3s and R4s. R3s will permit singles and semi-detached units. R4s will allow townhouses and apartment building uh, densities. The application uh, includes um, a, a designation of R3 for a standard single family or semi-detached. They've also requested an exception R3, which would um, allow for uh, semi-detached units driveways to not be paired up as required by the zoning bylaw, but in fact to be separated so that the, um, the garages and driveways for each of the individual semi-detached units will actually be um, at opposite sides of the lot. The reason that this um, request is being made, and it was actually done in the first phase as well, is that the semi-detached are built on a, on a bit of a slope as this property grades from Mattawaka Boulevard down to the old railway track at the rear. There's quite a drop. 
And when they build the semi detaches, if they put the two driveways together, it causes the, the, um, the building to require quite a uh, retaining wall between um, one semi detached uh, grouping and the next. Whereas if they split the laneways, they can do that split within that actual semi detached unit. It really helps them from a grading perspective with respect to the need for retaining walls. Um, it, it virtually gets rid of that need. Um, as a result, uh, we end up with um, smaller spaces on the street for uh, frontage for parking, but because these units are, are fairly large in their design, uh, we still end up with space in front of units for at least a car. So um, it does have a bit of an impact, but at the end of the day, it, um, it, it get a better product when you can um, not pair the driveways in this case. Uh, so that will only affect those, those lots that are really impacted by the, uh, by the grade change. They've also requested a, a rezoning for a part of their area to be a residential for exception 28. And this allows for townhouse dwellings with minimum interior side yards of 1 to 1.2 meters. Our current standard is 1.8 meter. However, when they first designed all of this subdivision together, they, they really had planned for the 1.2 meter and we have allowed them to, um, to have that uh, slightly reduced um, side yard setback uh, in the first and second phases as well. And they're, they're asking for it to be followed through to this phase. Uh, uh, the fourth request is for a residential four zone and it's an exception as well. So as I said, the residential four permits uh, townhouses and apartment type uh, development. In this case, uh, they are asking for the zoning to allow for a maximum building height of 15.5 meters, whereas our current is uh, 10.5 meters. Um, we have uh, in the previous phase given 15.5, it's permitted in our OP and, um, and it makes sense uh, along the frontage of Madawaska Boulevard where the R4 uh, exception will be. And then finally, they have an open space zone uh, for the um, proposed storm pond uh, in the back corner of the subdivision that would be part of phase four. So they've included that as well. So my report outlines the provincial policy statement. Um, my suggestion is the proposed zoning amendment is consistent with the policy framework set out in the PPS. Um, I also outlined the official plan policies and based on our, our draft approved plan of subdivision, the zoning amendment conforms to the policies of our ROP. Um, and then I outlined those exceptions in more detail for council. At this point, again, um, we're introducing the application to council and requesting that we hold a public meeting on November 8th um, to uh, receive public comment. And then I'll be back to council with a proposed bylaw. So we'll council will have another chance or two to see this before, uh, before you adopt the bylaw. Um, but at this point, um, I'm happy to answer any, any general questions and, um, and we'll set the meeting date for November 8th. Any questions for Robin? Tom, yeah. Uh, what did you say the reduction is going from 1.8 to 1.3 or 1.2 between? 1.2. Yeah, that is a side yard uh, reduction for townhouse units. So between two and townhouse units, our standard is a 1.8 meter um, setback from the property line. They request 1.2 meters, which is our previous uh, previous interior side yard setback for townhouses. I, uh, I, I guess because of uh, my fire background and knowing what has happened in the past, I, I certainly don't agree with that. I, I think it makes it hard for uh, if uh, fires happen and start because in most cases, they're using vinyl siding in both parts. And I think what uh, just happened this past week and a half down in Canada is just another example of what can happen with fire. So mm -hmm. I, I don't agree with that. But anyway, that's just my own personal feeling. Okay. Okay. So nobody else. Then I need an all in favor, please, for Robin's report. You put your hand down, I don't even get a chance to count them. There's, <laughs> thanks. Oh, I carried, thank you. Thank you. So the next one, we have proclamations, and the first one, Kayla, is local government week. The council proclaim October 18th, to 24th, 2021, as local government week in the town of Armbrayer. Mover and seconder, please. Chris and Lisa, uh, we want to read the proclamation. Yep. Whereas the week of October 18th to 24th, 2021 will be celebrated in Ontario as local government week. And whereas the municipal level of government performs the functions that significantly impact the day-to-day -day life of citizens throughout the world. 
and whereas the Association of Municipal Managers, Clerks, and Treasurers of Ontario, the Ontario Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing, and the Association of Municipalities of Ontario acknowledge and celebrate the significant role that municipal governments play in helping to define the character, priorities, physical makeup, and quality of life of communities across Ontario. And whereas the Town of Armour will be holding a local government week contest that asks students in grades one, five, and 10, what does it mean to be a good citizen? Students will be asked to submit a drawing, photo, video, or short essay answering this question. Prizes will be given out to the top three submissions. Now, therefore, the Town of Armour does hereby proclaim October 18th, 24th, 2021 as local government week in the Town of Armour. Okay. All in favor then, please? Carried, thank you. And our next one is waste reduction. The council proclaim October 18th to 24th, 2021 as waste reduction week in the town of Empire. Mover and seconder, please. And Tom and Chris, read this proclamation, please. Yes. Whereas the week of October 18th to 24th, 2021 is waste reduction week in Canada. And whereas Waste Reduction Week is a national environmental campaign that builds awareness around issues of sustainable and responsible consumption, encourages choice for more environmentally responsible products and services, and promotes actions that divert more waste from disposal and conserves natural resources. And whereas a municipality, we are committed to waste reduction, resource conservation, and community education for sustainable living. And whereas we realize that lo losing waste to disposal and as litter are local and global threats to the environment. And whereas we as a municipality will take action to reduce our waste and support the circular economy. Therefore, the Town of Armour does hereby proclaim October 18th, 24th, 2021 as Waste Reduction Week in the Town of Armour and urges residents to choose more environmentally responsible products and services and divert more waste from disposal and conserve natural resources. Okay, all Okay, it's good. Carried, thank you. The next one is Ontario Public Library Week. The council proclaim October 17th, the 23rd, 2021 is Ontario Public Library Week in the town of Empire. Move and second here, please. Lisa and Dan, we'll read that proclamation, please. Whereas October 17th, the 23rd, 2021 is being celebrated across the province of Ontario as Ontario Public Library Week. And whereas during this week, libraries, library partners raise awareness of the valuable role libraries play in our lives. Whereas the Armour Public Library serves as a center for lifelong learning and plays a vital role in helping citizens of all ages access the information and tools they need to live, learn, and work. And whereas the board, staff, and volunteers of the Armour Public Library provide a vital service to our community. And whereas this year, the theme for Ontario Public Library Week is One Card, One Million Possibilities. And whereas in a world undergoing constant change, public libraries provide enduring connections to the past and future of our communities, nations, and civilizations. Now, therefore, the Town of Armour does hereby proclaim October 17th, the 23rd, 2021 as Ontario Public Library Week in the Town of Armour and encourage residents to show their support for their public library, not just this week, but all year long and utilize the services they have to offer. Okay, all in favor for that one, please. Carrie, thank you. And we have one more, which is Small Business Week. The Council proclaim October 17th, the 23rd, 2021 as Small Business Week in the Town of Armour. Mover and seconder. Lynn, Chris, we'll read this proclamation, please. Whereas Small Business Week has been recognized since 1981 as an opportunity to celebrate the small business owners who provide essential services, local jobs, and an invaluable touch point in our communities. And whereas the Business Development Bank of Canada organizes Small Business Week in Canada to pay tribute to Canadian entrepreneurs. And whereas this year's theme is resiliency. This theme celebrates the hardworking Canadian entrepreneurs who have shown their courage and adaptability in the face of COVID-19 pandemic. And whereas the town of Armpire recognizes the importance of small businesses to the growth and development of our town and county. Now, therefore, the town of Armpire does hereby proclaim October 17th to 23rd, 2021 as Small Business Week in the town of Armpire and encourages Armpire residents to shop and support their local small businesses. Very good, another important one. All in favor? Carrie, thank you. Thanks, Caleb. <clears throat> so we have a motion to uh, accept a couple committee reports. <clears throat> the council received the following committee minutes as information. The Corporate Services Advisory Committee minutes of May 3rd, 2021, and the Operations Advisory Committee minutes of May 17th, 2021. Move and seconder, please. Ted and Chris, 
Any, any comments? All in favor then, please? Carried, thank you. We have no notice of motions. Dan, the county report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The county's Truth and Reconciliation Garden is progressing nicely and it could be finished by the end of November. Nominations for the warden are being accepted. The present day warden, Diane Robinson, has indicated she'll run again. We had a delegation from the Renfrew County Community Futures Development Board. The board chair, Mr. Ray Bonnenberg, provided an overview of activities during COVID. The highlights included businesses can apply for a $300,000 loan with a 10-year payback. To date, they have loaned out $41,882,607 and nobody has defaulted. There's 4,614 jobs created and maintained to which 7.1% were in Arnpar. Second delegation we had was from the local immigration partnership, Jody Buckholtz, through the Algonquin College. She's making a pitch to the newcomers arriving in, I guess, Toronto and Montreal to come to Renfrew to be part of our agriculture and our business communities. Of note, um, last weekend we had the German contingent come to McNabb Brayside and uh, we're showing what is needed and the cedar, the spruce and some other tree are gonna be harvested right here in the county. So that's a, a bonus. Uh, going along back with uh, Jody, she's gonna have the team approach, which will visit the newcomer and welcome the families and some sort of a welcome wagon that is still being uh, formed. The 2022 Ontario Winter Games are having issues with schools and transportation, obviously with COVID. End of October, we're going to be a decision to see which uh, events may or may not be canceled. January 18, 17, 18, 2022, the county budget workshop is going to be held and the levy will be set at 2.5. EORN, the county gig submission was not accepted in its entirety and, we've, and will be piecemealed. And that's going to be led by Jennifer Murphy. So we'll know we'll get done, but just don't know when. For persons using the Algonquin Trail, the CN line near Pembroke has been sold to developers and it'll be closed, barricaded on the 1st of November. And provincial projects that have been or approved stages in Arm Prior include Conceal des Coles Catholics du Center Est, you know, the new Catholic school, a new school build that will contain a licensed child care center and has expected completion date of September 2022. Projected for 49 licensed care spaces, 10 infant, 15 toddler and 24 preschool. As well, plans have been submitted for a new licensed child care with the existing St. John 23rd with an unknown completion date. So I guess we're gonna have a population explosion. And lastly, Mr. Mayor, I've participated in four meetings, the Algonquin Trail, the operations, Development of Property and County Council. Thank you. Any comments or questions for Dan? None? Okay. Dan, just one that we didn't mention, but we are going to meet and talk about next week is the uh, the uh, recommendation to Council on uh, the cost-sharing thing that's coming up. Yes, sir. 0800 Monday morning? Yeah, we'll, we'll go through that with John, but and there'll be questions, I'm sure, after that. But in case I'd forget... I'd like to see ask for a recorded vote on that one when it hits the council table in February. That should be February 2022, sir. February. I thought it was going back to council at the end of this month in your email. I know well, it's going to DNP, but the final product is supposed to be February 2022, I believe. I'll reconfirm. Yeah, okay. Just reading your email said uh, the council is on the 20 something of this month or something, but I could have read that wrong. Anyways, thanks. Just make note of that because I'd like to, to see that handled that way. Okay, thanks, Dan. Now, Kayla, correspondence. Correspondence package number I 21 October 17 be received as information and filed accordingly. Move and seconder, please. Lynn and Dan, any comments? Dan? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. On page nine, November 15, long-term care home residents will be more protected as COVID-19 vaccinations will be mandatory 
for all in-home staff, support workers, students, and volunteers. Of note, the provincial policy is, if you're gonna to try to vote or try to visit someone in the Empire Hospital or any other hospital, the patient can only see one person per day, period. So you gotta get in the line to make an appointment. But like I say, there's only one person. On page 21, the province is strengthening commitment to athlete safety on Rowan Law Day by investing 125K to create a safer environment for athletes to play sports. Rowan Day is in honor of Rowan Stringer, a 17 year old Ottawa rugby player who died with a condition known as second impact syndrome. On page 44, the township of North Algama Wilferforce has opened up their new municipal office. Uh, we haven't been there yet. On page 45, the, as we previously mentioned in the county, the president of the Renfrew County ATV Club, Teresa Hebb, has released a notice that the CNB trail has been sold to private property developers. Due to the Muskrat River, there are no detours. This closure will affect riders in all directions. On page 45, look for a new brand from our neighbor, the township of McNabb Brayside. Carol McLaughlin will be creating a new brand for their marketing and website. Page 51, the County of Renfrew is now accepting nominations for the Warden's Community Service Award. The deadline for submission is 5 November. And that's it, Mr. Muir, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? And all in favor, please? Carried, thank you. And we have a resolution, Kayla? Council approved the recommendation for the plan of subdivision proposed by TNS Holding Inc. in September of 2014 and indicated to the approval authority of the County of Renfrew that the proposed draft plan of subdivision was not premature, that it met the intent of the provincial policy statements and requesting the conditions of draft approval as outlined in the staff report. And whereas draft approval was given by the County of Renfrew on August 5th, 2015, with revised conditions issued on December 11th, 2018, which will lapse on December 11th, 2021, if not granted an extension by the County of Renfrew before the lapsing date. And whereas the applicant has requested that council provide a resolution in support of a request for extension as the development is proceeding in a phased approach with phases one and two registered and the developer actively working on finalizing phase three, four, and five. Therefore be it resolved that council supports the request by Madawaska Region A for a one-year extension to the draft approval of Marshall's Bay Meadows draft plan of subdivision and that this resolution be forwarded to the County of Renfrew for consideration of approval. Okay, moving under please. Ted and Lynn, any comments? All in favor then please? Carrie, thank you. Okay, announcements. I'm gonna start off tonight because I have a couple that I'd like to get out there. Uh, first of all, you, you know, you remember last uh, couple of weeks ago, I attended the opening of uh, the New Grove which is a, a pretty impressive uh, site. But just, you know, on a bit of a personal note, you know, it is open. Uh, I have a family member, a brother, who will be moving into the Grove next Tuesday. And we were really anxious about the timing because his situation could have taken him virtually anywhere in Ontario, but certainly outside of Empire. So it's just an example of what that location is going to do for the, for the town. Uh, secondly, Small Business Week. Uh, the local Chamber of Commerce is uh, asking that we join in supporting our small business amazing community by partaking in Thursday's late night shopping, Friday's fall date night, and Saturday's family fun day. The, uh, their website will have all the details on it for them. The other thing is I want to uh, recognize Daryl O'Shaughnessy on behalf of the council and staff of the town of Empire. I want to congratulate Daryl on being the recipient of the Ontario Senior Achievement Award. The Ontario Senior Achievement Awards recognizes people who have made outstanding contributions to their communities through volunteer, voluntary or professional activities after the age of 65. Daryl certainly is an outstanding member of our senior community through his many volunteer positions. He is chair of the Greater Empire's Senior Council, was involved in forming local seniors active living center, as well as creating a creation of a local men's shed. And he founded local Dragon Boats uh, Club to name just a few of his projects. Daryl was a recipient of the Town of Empire 2017 <laughs> of the Year Award 
and we are thrilled to see as many efforts in this community continue to see the recognition they deserve. Congratulations to Daryl. <clears throat> another one I would, uh, is another well-deserved uh, recognition is that uh, the Ranford County District Health Unit Acting Medical Officer of Health, Dr. Robert Cushman, was recognized as a Community Builder of the Year by United Way of Eastern Ontario. On behalf of the council and staff and the residents of Ampere, I'd like to extend our warmest congratulations to Dr. Cushman on being recognized as a Community Builder on, <clears throat> of the Year by the United Way of Eastern Ontario. The town has benefited from the leadership shown by Dr. Cushman throughout the pandemic, as indicated by the recognition bestowed on him as focused on <coughs> excuse me, ensuring services are readily accessible to most the most vulnerable. Equally, he has called attention to the pandemic's enormous collateral damage to the schooling and community mental health and the need to rebuild services with this top of mind. By building networks of community service providers, Dr. Cushman has fostered a collaborative cross-sectoral -sector partnership in Renfrew County and District to fight the pandemic. Working with Dr. Cushman to ensure the safety of our residents and visitors during ever-changing time has been a privilege. So congratulations to Dr. Cushman. And, uh, you know, our monthly update meetings are a good example of the effort that he puts uh, forward in, uh, in communicating with all of the communities in Renfrew County. The last one is the announcement uh, I want to make was, uh, and I just want to speak briefly to it, and then I'll hand it over to uh, the chair of the Empire, uh, Airport Commission, Ted, to make comments. But I was privileged to be asked to go to the Russell Bannock uh, Award or plaque presentation at the Empire Airport a couple of weeks back. And I don't know if you read anything, but I would certainly like to see this information forwarded off to uh, both our archives and our uh, museum. Mr. Bannock was a, uh, a flight instructor at uh, flight school number three during the Second World War, which was located at the Empire Airport. And he had a, a very good friend in the, in the name, by the name of Mr. Woolings. And I have some pictures of, of the day here in my office if people want to look at them. Mr. Woolings wanted to recognize his friend for uh, all the hard work he did. So he had this, uh, he commissioned this plaque to be uh, presented and wanted to uh, have it hung at the Empire Airport. So uh, there were, you know, keeping all the COVID uh, conditions in, in uh, play, we had this pre presentation of the plaque uh, about two weeks ago at the airport and it was pretty impressive day to, uh, to hear uh, Mr. Bannock's history and how it relates to this town and in particular to that airport. So Ted, I wanna hand it over to you as the chair if you wanna make some comments. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Certainly, I agree with everything you said. Um, it's, on, it's a surprise to me that this hasn't surfaced long before now. And it is, uh, you know, it's a great privilege to have the uh, plaque erected in uh, Air Empire Airport. And there is quite a history that goes with it. I think at the last council meeting, I gave you a website that you go to to find out the history. And uh, I think I saw that it might be in the paper this week, which is a more detailed description of uh, uh, his efforts uh, in World War II. Uh, one of the amazing ones to me was his destruction of uh, four, uh, four of those uh, flying bombs, the, the first uh, version of it, in, in an hour. So, you know, that's just one example of uh, this man's ability, and it's worth reading really want to be interested in. And I'd like to uh, agree with you to see that the library and the museum get, the, the archives and, and the museum get this. Yes, I agree. He was also, it was interesting to know that he was an ace during the Second World War and he was dubbed the savior of London uh, with a number of successful flights he had made over, uh, over London during the war. It's, I think, you know, I was shocked as well, Ted, that there was no knowledge of this, that. You know, and I thought I knew a fair bit about this town with my own legacy family here, but and my father was in the Air Force in the Second World War, a veteran and worked at the airport, but never heard anything about this, but pretty impressive piece of history. And I, I think it's really important that, as I said, the library and the archives get 
get this information and catalog it. You know, Miss Bowling <laughs> was his, uh, was uh, Mr. Banning's friend, lifelong friend, and he actually came to know the airport because he sold. I think he had a fastener company, a manufacturing company, and he sold fasteners. Uh, Jim Sawyer was telling me a local guy who was Jim Sawyer at one time was president of Boeing Canada. And he met Mr. Rowlings back in the days when he used to fly into the Air Empire Airport to do business with Boeing. And that's how he got to know about Air Empire and, and uh, obviously knew his friend's history. So, uh, and he, his family are all flyers. His daughter actually flew their, their jet in for the day. And Mr. Rowlings was in a wheelchair and had spent a large percentage of uh, the past year in hospital but made this trip because it was that important to him to to have this recognized so it was a very impressive day you know thanks so any other announcements from anyone mr mayor if i could add one comment yeah go ahead ted yeah the organization uh, to put this together took more than a year and uh, special thanks to airport manager Dwayne price for putting it all together making it work without a hitch and, uh, you know, there's a lot of credit has to go to Duane. Family is very appreciated of what uh, Duane had uh, organized. It was a terrific event. Thanks. Yeah, it sure was. And the second in command of the Can Royal Canadian Air Force was there that day, who happened to know Mr. Bannock as well. So it was pretty impressive. Dan? Yeah. I concur with uh, both statements. Um, Mr. Bannock, when he died, bequeathed that something happened at the Air Force base from WW2. Of course, it's closed, and so now it came to the airport. So the announcements, Mr. Mayor, is uh, if you enjoy Oktoberfest food on the 14th of October, the Galilee Center is offering a luncheon that will include the vegetable borscht soup, smoked sausage, sauerkraut, pierogies, along with fruit crisp and ice cream. Seating is limited, so we get a reservation. Two is uh, our town is safe, thanks to Mayor Stack and staff completing the emergency planning exercise held last Thursday. Unofficial reports from Luminex indicate the town did well, so we're still in business. And lastly, Mr. Mayor's last Sunday morning, Russell McKay, a native of Beachburg, better known as Papa, who is 83 year olds young, toured our town completing a five kilometer walk that raised money for the hospice rent route. Out of one of the five towns, our empire is one of the ones he selected. So we thank him for uh, for bringing our town into the hospice rent through fold. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Dan. Uh, just another interesting point about, uh, about Mr. Wollings. I, I didn't ha know the connection until afterwards, but I found out about just a little more than a year ago, I got a call making an inquiry in what kind of, you know, I don't want to use the wrong word, but what state the Empire Airport was in because there was a gentleman who wanted to buy it. And that was, it turned out to be Mr. Woolings who was looking to buying the airport at the time. Yeah. Media questions? I do not have any hands raised, Mr. Mayor. No. Chris yes, Del Chris. Papa. Yes, <clears throat> sorry. I, I do have a, uh, <clears throat> I have an announcement, Mr. Mayor, too, sorry. So uh, last, uh, yeah, <clears throat> last October or last Wednesday, October 6th, I attended the Arm Prior Optimist Club meeting, and in attendance was uh, Lieutenant Governor um, of District 10, Brian Purcell. And he was in attendance to present the, uh, the Arm Prior Optimist Club with their 60th anniversary plaque. Uh, he was also in attendance to present to uh, Brad McKay, Optimist Brad McKay, with a certificate acknowledging his efforts in recruiting or sponsoring 20 new Optimist members. Um, and from what they said, that is a very, uh, very rare and possibly the first in the province. So uh, congratulations to uh, Brad for his efforts and to the Optimist Club once again on their 60th anniversary. Job well done. Yes, congratulations to the club for 60 years. It doesn't really surprise me with Brad after watching him go through the the rink of dreams process, you know, pretty energetic. Okay, so there are no media questions. We have no closed. We need a confirmatory bylaw, please. The bylaw 722121 being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the regular meeting of council held on October 12, 2021, be and is hereby enacted. 
Mover and seconder, please. Dan and Tom, all in favor? Carried. An adjournment. Waiting for the motion from. That this meeting be adjourned at 7 19 p.m. <laughs> Mover and seconder, Lynn and Lisa. All in favor? Carrie, thanks, folks. Good night. Thank you.